Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Tr- Nintendo Treehouse Live. My name is JC, and I'm joined by some friends. I got Sam, and I have Ethan hey. with me. <laughs> and we're going to take you through a little bit of Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. Let's uh, go. No, right? Like, I'm actually pretty excited <laughs> about this. You know, I'm a Monster Hunter fan myself. So, again, super big honor um, because, you know, Capcom just recently announced that the demo is coming. So, the demo is coming on June 25, which is just around the corner. And, of course, the full game launches on July 9. So, again, super big thanks to Capcom for making this all possible and giving me another Monster Hunter game <laughs> to play. Um, and yeah, uh, again, for those folks that are also, you know, Monster Hunter fans like myself, uh, stick around to the end because we are also going to talk about some cross-functionality between Monster Hunter Rise and this game. Uh, so with that being said, uh, Sam, if you please. You got it. Let's hop in here. Let's get started. So I've been having a ton of fun with this demo, and I'm really excited that we get a chance to show it off to y'all a little bit early before it launches. As we hop in here real quick, this is a great moment to take a look at my character. I did a bunch of customization before I started the demo, and I named my character after one of the biggest Monster Hunter fans I know. So Amber, if you're watching, I really hope we do you proud and you get a kick out of this. Yeah, Amber. <laughs> you can see from my save data, I've been in this demo for a few hours now, and I could actually easily spend another few hours. This is a really beefy demo experience. Yep. Good news, though, is if you try it and you like it, and I mean, it's going to be free in the Nintendo eShop, so why not give it a go and see if you like it? All of your progress will carry over to the final version of the game, so you don't have to worry about retreading any ground if you hop in and check it out. And right here, we have loaded into my house, so I'll just give a little bit of a look around here as we kind of set the stage for what we're going to be doing. This is a story-driven, turn-based RPG set in the Monster Hunter world. If you don't know anything about the Monster Hunter franchise, no worries, we'll be getting you up to speed. If you are familiar, I think you're really going to be interested in the connections that you maybe already know from the game. It really draws on a lot of the mechanics. It is the same world, you're going to see the same monsters, but a bit of a different take here. And as somebody myself who really loves RPGs and turn-based combat, this really suits my game style nicely. You know, Sam, uh, jumping in on that, I just want to also point out that I think this might be the first time we're doing live gameplay, right? It is, yeah. Mm. This is world first live gameplay. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. Uh, So here, real quick, my house is where I can save the game. It's also where I can do some character customization. My little buddy over here, Navaru, is a really unusual, very distinctive looking feline. He's a (laughs) bit of a world traveler, but he and I crossed paths recently, and he's decided that he's going to hang out and help me on my adventure. So... We will see lots more of him in a bit, but I really want to get out here. I love how cozy it is, though, in your house. Like, I want to hang (laughs) out in there very much. I will say this game's art style really speaks to me. I think Capcom's done an amazing job of really making an immersive, beautiful world. And as somebody who hasn't had a chance to get out of the house much lately, it's really nice to have a chance to explore somewhere (laughs) that's so beautiful and expansive. I can talk to people even though they're not real and have a big adventure. So I'm, I'm really appreciating this. Uh, so here, as we take a little bit of a look around my home village, if you think about Monster Hunter, just the name of the franchise, even if you've never played, you can probably guess that it's Monster Hunter. Mm-hmm. You normally have a pretty adversarial relationship to monsters, but that's not the case in this game. My character is part of a community that has figured out a way to really live in harmony with monsters. Yep. They are our friends who fight alongside us, got a beautiful kind of housing setup for our monster friends over here. We even, actually, if I take a look over here, we just chill on the beach with them. And I I love this little duo. They're just kind of chilling, living their best life here. (laughs) And and my home is honestly kind of paradise. I won't talk too much about uh, all the different facilities that are available in my village. Normally, it's a peaceful, wonderful place, but recently things have gone a little sideways. Mm. I am a novice monster rider. I'm just kind of learning the ropes. My teacher over here, Kana, has been teaching me what it means to be a monster rider. Kana, what's up? She she is amazing, and she's a very good teacher, but right now she's also dealing with the fact that there are a lot of really unusual occurrences taking place in the island. We'll talk about the story in a bit more detail, but what you need to know right now is monsters are acting very strangely, very aggressively. There's a lot of unusual activity going on around the island. So on top of teaching me how to be a monster rider, she's also teaching me how to uh, handle crisis management as we try to figure (laughs) out what happened to our island. Because we've had a lot of weird natural phenomenon and and things just kind of going sideways on us. So recently we found out that there is a poisonous monster that's causing a lot of problems in another part of the island. So I recently got back from a mission and I've been getting ready to head out to try to track down that poisonous beastie. 
I hit the quest board over here, turned in a bunch of quests, which gave me a lot of XP for my party, Zenny, which is the in-game currency, and a bunch of items. I then turned around and used some of that in-game currency, the Zenny, to pick up some antidotes from a local merchant. Seemed like a good idea, since we're going to be dealing with a poison monster. Uh, grabbed some more quests as well. So the quest board's a great central place to get those, but I can also get quests from NPCs around the world. Mm -hmm. I used some more of that Zenny I picked up to... Uh, buy some other items that maybe I'll have a chance to show off here. I also did some crafting. So I used monster parts and materials that I've found around the island and from my battles to craft this amazing new sword with the help of the smithy in town. It's called the chicken decapitator. I, I got to assume that we got, that. We, we got big chickens. <laughs> is it really? It chicken is. Chicken decapitator? Yeah. It's so cool that we look at it. I just made it and I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. I also used some ore to upgrade my hammer. So my gear is about ready. There's one last thing I have to do. So under normal circumstances, and sorry, just a moment to appreciate this little feline in all of his majesty. Uh, I would normally hatch eggs before I turn in quests because I want the monsters that I've hatched to enjoy the bonus of all that XP. But I kind of reversed the order here from what I'd normally do so that I could show y'all a hatching before we head out into the field. Aww. And just look at this little dude. Bulldrome. This little Bulldrome. And he actually, I think, got an attack bonus there as well. So he is a new monster to add to my party. I'll just leave his name as is. And for any RPG, party mechanics and party strategy are key, and here it's no different. But the pretty awesome thing here is that most of my party members are actually monsters. Mm -hmm. So here, I'm actually gonna change my lead monster over to the new bull drone so that we can see what he's like in the field. And he's hopefully gonna have some fun out here with me as we get rolling. As we head out of the village, you'll notice that I get the option of choosing to head out in the afternoon or the evening. So for the sake of this segment, we're gonna stick with afternoon departure times, but I do encourage folks who are watching when you're playing this yourself, mix it up a bit, check things out in the field, in the afternoon and in the evening. As we mentioned, crafting and finding those key materials is so important to the Monster Hunter experience and things are gonna be a little different at night. So you wanna mix it up a little bit. And before we get rolling here, I'll just take a little bit of a scan around so you can see the environment. There are a lot of different spots here in my island home that I've already visited over the course of the demo. Some other places I haven't quite been yet. Here behind me, you can see Navarro is on the back of the bulldrome I just hatched. <laughs> and there's Kana and her monster <laughs> companion as well. And we'll do a little bit of exploring here. So when it comes to collecting materials, some like this over here, Pretty easy to spot, not a problem to grab that. Other materials are gonna be a lot harder to find, especially when you're thinking about insects, some of the really small collectibles. You're just really gonna to wanna to dig into these environments to find all the goodies so that you can craft to your heart's content. And while yeah. you're doing that, you wanna be careful of the monsters. I, I just wanted to say like, we've, you know, we've gotten a chance to see you run around out here before and I just, I love how alive the environment is and, and your point about, you know, spotting those those items you can pick up. There's like so much detail to spot and it really rewards you if you're that person that loves exploring every nook and cranny, um, you know, of these, you know, big open spaces. And to jump on that point, you know, I was thinking about, um, you know, coming from the Monster Hunter Rise side, I'm a, I'm a fan, right? So... I think regardless if you are a Monster Hunter fan existing, like a current one that's just really into mm -hmm. Monster Hunter, or if you're not into Monster Hunter at all and you're interested to get into the series, I think this is actually a really good game for you to pick up and just to understand the world. Yep. Even the cycle of going out, finding stuff, and then like coming back, and then crafting, all of those things, that whole cycle still applies uh, yep. in Monster Hunter. So again, great first point of entry into the series. Ooh, and... Um I wasn't going to talk about these just yet, but we kind of <laughs> lucked out here. You see that gold pile of rocks up ahead? Yeah. That is a rare monster den, and Ooh. it is going to kill me that I can't go in here right now because it's not <laughs> on the plan for our segment. We know about your completionist den. <sighs> okay, so I, I can talk about it at least. So monster dens are a really fantastic place to go if you want to fight new monsters, hopefully find some eggs and build out your party. Some of the dens are persistent on the map. Others are either rare, like this beautiful right. gold one that's taunting me over here, or they only <laughs> appear under very specific circumstances. So normally when you play, 
hit those up every time you see them because that is the best way to level up your party and also build up your party with new monsters. You sure we can't just take a peek in there? <laughs> I, I, I want to, but I feel like I'll, I'll run out of time if I do. Yeah. Um, also over here, uh, just to take a look out, and uh, we noticed this earlier, uh, monsters appear in the field, so I can choose whether or not to interact with them, whether or not to engage with battle. Mm -hmm. Again, if I was just playing this normally, I would be running up to every single one of these monsters, <laughs> getting into fights, but I have a lot to cover here, so I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, I know it some hurts of the a little bit for you, Sam. I know, I know. You play games. <laughs> some of the guys up there were herbivores, so they pretty much leave me alone. But these guys are a little bit more complicated. They're hostile. They're going to come at me. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to use Bulldrome's dash move and see if I can time this right to sneak by them. You've got this. Uh, oh, yeah, you can... That guy's crossing my path. I want them all kind of clustered up. So this <laughs> is one of the interesting things about... Let's do it. You got it. Just oh. Yes. Come on, Bulldrome. Go, go, Bulldrome. Sneaking through. There we go. Oh, okay. Nice. He, he's not easy to turn. <laughs> he just kind of goes. So, oh, keep going, buddy. Keep going. All right. I think we're good. I'm just going to, there we go. Okay. Straight away here. We absolutely nice want to think about, oh, okay, there we go. Um, we want to think about party strategy when it comes to monsters in battle, and we'll get into that in a bit. But these traversal skills are also really important, mm -hmm. especially this early in the game. I've noticed a lot of places that I can't get to quite yet. Maybe I'd need to swim or I'd need to climb, but I don't have a monster that can do that. Yeah. So I want to think about which monsters have the skills that I want to use to navigate the environment and then also who I want to have in battle. Yeah, I love that, that both sides of things. Like, you definitely, I mean, battles are a big thing, obviously, as we're going to see, but I love that you're also considering what type of environment am I, am I in? What particular abilities does you know each monster have? Those vines. Um, and and building that up. And actually, that's one reason that I swapped back over to Ranmar here. So Bulldrome was great with that dash ability for getting by those monsters, but he's still a level one. He doesn't have much experience under his belt. Ranmar is really nicely leveled. So as we get into a fight here, I want him in the lead. Oh boy. He'll be the first oh monster boy. into battle. Here we go. Start talking about some battle strategy. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay, so we snuck up on him. So to start it off here, I'm going to keep it with really basic attacks so we can just walk through some of the really ground level mechanics before we go further. The first important thing to know about this game is I really only have control over myself. I don't pick the actions for my full party. If you take a look at the lower edge of the screen there, I can see what each of my teammates is going to do. If I get a high enough kinship bonus going with my monster, I could maybe tell the monster what to do, but beyond that, really, I'm paying attention to what my teammates are doing so I can strategize around them. And the next really key element to combat is this kind of rock, paper, scissor mechanic. And you can see an indicator on the left side of the screen that is a helpful reminder there. So essentially, power beats technical, technical beats speed, speed beats power. I love that that icon triangle because I would totally forget that. <laughs> so, yeah. I said it's color coded. Yeah. It's a handy reminder. And for me, it's actually my attack option because I can do all three kinds of attacks. And I'm going to focus the Kuliyaku because he'll be nice and burly and a good practice monster. I know he is generally speaking a technical type. So I'm going with a nice simple power attack with my sword. So when it comes to monsters and their attack types, different monsters have uh, kind of a predisposition toward ter certain types. So Kuliaku tends to throw out technical attacks, Renmar tends to throw out speed attacks, but I can't necessarily guarantee that. So I have to allow for a little bit of uh, uncertainty here, plan a team that's going to have some uh, good flexibility, and also just pay attention to what's going on. This is not a game where I can just button mash my way through. Right. And here you see there are some bright lines connecting me to the two monsters. That means that both of them have decided to target me for their next attack. And uh, another interesting place where the rock, paper, scissor mechanic goes in is if I choose to attack Kuliaku and I have the power advantage over what's hopefully a technical attack that that Kuliaku throws out, I'm going to do more damage. Okay, I'm good. It did throw a technical out. Nice. There you can see my power attack beat the technical. So I did a nice chunk of damage. Uh, my kinship meter, which is the little blue circle between me and my monster, got filled up. Mm -hmm. You really want to do your best to optimize those opportunities, pay attention to the move types, also pay attention to how monsters change up their move types, and that's something that you definitely see in any Monster Hunter game. You, you can't just assume yeah. what's going to happen with a monster. And here, Kuliaku picked up a rock. So... Yeah. And JC, like, I know when we've, you know, we've seen Sam do some mm -hmm. battling before, and 
I love those things you called out that were like, oh yeah, I've seen this. Like this is familiar to me, right? From yeah. being an experienced Monster Hunter player. So funny. It's actually the first thing I was like, oh, he picked up a rock. I'm like, that's right. He also <laughs> picks up a rock in Monster Hunter Rise. And if you see a rock, you want to do like a blunt, like attack to the front, or you Smash just want to like, yeah. See, like <laughs> it's it's all there. All all of this knowledge is all the same. So again, a great way to prep folks. So again, if you're a you know Monster Hunter fan like me, you'll recognize a lot of the things they pulled like really clever details like that. Uh, like breaking parts and you see the monster get knocked over and you're like this is like the f everyone kind of is super excited when they see a monster get knocked over because like this is the time for you to do damage and yeah. that was interesting actually i was going to smash the rock with a hammer but ramar actually did the job for me i think it was ramar or avmar <laughs> they, they did an attack and knocked the monster prone so they broke the rock part so now that rock is not a problem ramar Monsters gonna ram prune <laughs> doing work man uh now i can see i can attack the monster they're downed so all of my attacks are going to be crits but if i take a look at the icons that are above the monster there there's a line a little red dash through the bludgeoning damage type so mm -hmm. my hammer's not a good choice and i'm going to swap <coughs> back to my sword because i was having good Your luck chicken with decapitator <laughs> yes i mean look at this thing ever. it's awesome it's huge <laughs> and it's flashy oh. it's stylish i'm a fan and uh, it, for anybody who's played Monster Hunter, you know, it's, it's all about getting the gear, uh, collecting parts from monsters so you can craft this really awesome stuff. Yeah. It looks cool as well as being functional. Yeah, I love the way it changes your look and, and you get this whole different vibe on your character based on the gear they have equipped. So here we're getting loads of experience, which is great for Bulldrome because he's a kiddo. He's got to grow up. <laughs> got some uh, collectibles and monster parts, and a really important hey. thing to pay attention to nice is... Nice A-rank. Oh, yeah. thank you. Uh, I could get S if I did a little better, but, yeah. you know, talking and playing is, is kind of weird. It's tough. Um, <laughs> really, the goal there is to really optimize my battle strategy. So, again, you don't want to battle map... Uh, sorry, button mash through these battles. You want to think strategically, make smart choices, make the best use of your party you can. The more effectively you do in a battle, the more bonus points you're going to get. Try to get up to rank S. That's going to improve the rewards coming out of battle. And if you really want to bump up your party, thinking strategically and getting those S ranks is the best way to go. Yup. Now that we're back, uh, let's see here. Let's head this way. Yeah. Uh, you can actually see down here at the bottom, I've got my map indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, that little dotted line is indicating where I've been, and it is super helpful. Uh, right. I will say for the sake of this demo, I'm beelining it through spaces that I would normally spend a lot more time exploring. I'm, I'm missing a lot of the cool details because I want to make sure we get to all of our content. Oh, uh, they're coming for me. Wait, no, 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 no. I can't afford to fight right now. You guys calm down. Or we're going we're gonna to try to be sneaky here. They were just excited to see a fellow Ramar. You I know. know. Hi. What's up? Oh, happy. All right. Um, oh, screw it. We'll just see how this goes. Ah, uh, come on, buddy. Uh, Sam, jump, 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 jump. Go, 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 go. Amazing. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, the jumps, the dodges. We're good. Um, oh, sorry. What I was saying there was the uh, dotted line of the map is really helpful because right now I'm beelining it and I'm missing a lot of stuff that I want people to take the time to discover for themselves in these areas. But with all the backtracking you can do in here to find materials and find all the monsters that are looking in these spaces, you can get a little lost. Having yeah. that dotted line to tell you, okay, here's where you were, let's try to backtrack is oh. super helpful. And I'm going to try to miss this young cuckoo. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I wish I could fight you and take your parts, but we got places <laughs> to be, so you may live. Yeah, this, you know, the map is big. Um, I, you know, getting my hands on it a little bit, I, I totally realized, like, this is a yeah. beefy demo. Just this one it's little no section. Joke. There's a lot in here. It's just a lot. Okay, so we found a monster den. Uh, we're going to do some investigating here, see if maybe we can get a bead on that poisonous monster that's hanging around this area. So mm. let's see what we got here. I smell something. So I will mention here, I set the VO to English just in case anybody's watching today who can't quite pay full attention to the screen, but you can swap over to the Japanese VO. So if you prefer to listen to Japanese voice acting, go right ahead. You have your choice of how you want to set that. <laughs> and I think oh, we no. maybe found our poison problem. <sighs> it's so cute. <laughs> Isn't this one of your favorite monsters? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a Puke Puke. Uh, so this monster's called a Puke Puke. It, uh, you know, it lashes out with its tongue to do... Uh, uh, you know, some attacks, it has some poison to it, um, and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like so ugly, mm. it can't help it, so it's cute. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually working on a new dance called uh, Do the Puke Puke, but oh, wow. I'm not going to reveal it here. Oh um, man, if we had time at the end of the segment. 
Could be the Netherworld debut. (laughs) (laughs) What have I done? So uh, I kind of took a a little bit of a hint there from uh, what Navaru and Kano were saying before we entered in the battle. They mentioned that these guys are kind of tricky, so I'm I'm hoping that means technically inclined, and it looks like it. They're generally throwing out technical attacks here, so... Oh, there. Double attack. Both Renmar and I threw out a technical attack... Sorry, um, a power attack against the technical at the same time. We had the advantage, so... We did a double attack, but what I'm actually going to do here is swap over to Bulldrome. Mm -hmm. Because even though Ranmar is a higher level and, generally speaking, does really well in combat, my Bulldrome is inclined toward power attacks, which against a technical monster is going to be a little safer. So, going to see how he does out here. He's got some levels now, so hopefully he'll be okay. And Kanan using a special attack. She's got the sword and shield combo, which is another slashing damage type. And what oh, is it doing? Yeah, it's eating. Usually that kind of heals a little bit, or does you know, or just kind of chills for a bit. Doesn't? Did its effect. face just turn a different color? Yeah. It's about to use poison apparently. So. Yeah. That's a thing. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to make a strategic adjustment here. Oh, I don't know if I have enough skill energy for it. though. Oh no, this is going to be bad. So, my bow here and. Yeah, I, uh, I'm out of luck this turn. Um, <laughs> if I had enough kinship gauge, I would want to use this absolute evasion move, which I think might help me avoid the poison. Okay. I but no. don't have enough energy, so I'm just going to go with an attack, see how piercing damage works against this monster. All right. And keep my fingers crossed that I'll build up that charge for later. Okay. You know, it's funny, Ethan, you pointed out kind of like uh, the face, you know, turning yeah. red and kind of looking at the monster. It was actually, like a subtle change, but... Yeah, it's actually one of the, the things that I kind of like is, you know, studying the monster, kind of knowing and recognizing, because right now, if you take a look at the top, it has mm-hmm. like question marks and like you can't really tell. Oh, oh, oh that boy, is so that's, gross. That's I love really it. gross. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> what? Man. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. That, that hit pretty hard. That, oh, look, it's that arc, the bow move would have been really good there. I know, right? And um, now it's kind of back to normal looking. Yeah, it's back to normal. So kind of okay. studying the monster, you know, taking a look at the way it feels, oh, when it's about to do something more. big, or when it's tired, all those visual things will yeah. change. So again, yep. things you learn either in Rise or here too, they're yeah. both applicable. And, so. and that's something like I've heard a ton about. I'm, I'm somebody who has observed the Monster Hunter series on mm. like from the sidelines, but I've heard tons of people talk about it, like you, other folks I know. Um, and it's all about, like, like you said, studying the monsters. And I love that, you know, we're in a different series here, but that those things still apply. Um, this is the time I've gotten oh, to spend oh no. at this and see is like definitely making me think this is oh, the, the title I'm going to dive in on. Oh no! Right. Oh, so there I lost a heart. I do not want to lose all my hearts. So let's it's see okay. how this goes. Okay. You can do it, Sam. I believe in you. Yeah, you got oh, this. Oh, thank you. You have a chicken decapitator. <laughs> I mean, why, why am I doubting myself? It's shameful. Um, okay, here I can choose parts. I want that tail gone, so I'm going to focus okay. my attacks on the tail. Uh, right here, Kana actually hopped onto the back of her monster. That was because her kinship gauge was full. So she had that full blue sphere. She was oh, able man. to hop on her monster's back, do this amazing kinship skill, after which she's going to hop back off cool. the monster. There's some other really great benefits yeah. to letting that skill charge fill up all the way. Um, as soon as she hopped onto her monster's back, she went back to full health. Her monster got a health boost, and uh, they had some other advantages that they could have enjoyed there as well. Uh, we're looking pretty good, so I'm just gonna I love keep attacking. too. You get like for using those skills, you get these cool cinematic visuals that that come in that just keep these battles so dynamic. Um, you know, I love turn pay, turn-based RPGs. Um, but, you know, sometimes they're a little static in, in terms of what you're doing and seeing during a battle. I just love all the different moves you're breaking out, and you get rewarded with these these really cool scenes like that. And speaking of, I could use my ride right now, um, which would refill my health and uh, give us the ability to do that, that cool ride move of our own. Mm-hmm. Since Kana's going to be waiting a while to do that again, I'm just going to use it now. I'm not going to wait too long. If she was close to the same level of kinship gauge that I'm at, I would probably wait for her to catch up, but... Let's see how we go here. And if we both do at the same time, there's actually a really awesome animation, so I'm hoping we work out the timing <laughs> here somewhere. Go, oh, Mr. Pig! <laughs> yes! Oh, hard broken. Nice. All nice. right. So hopefully that tail means no more nasty, massive swinging attacks and poison all over the place. Yeah, it should not after that. All right, let's go back to some regular attacks here. So we can see here the, the piercing indicator was uh, crossed out with a red line, so... Mm-hmm. Beyond that skill that I'd like to be able to use, using my bow is not going to be super effective in this fight. 
Uh, the piercing type damage is really interesting though. It's a new addition to the game. So we've got bows and we've also got gun lances, which we right. didn't have in the 3DS game that came out a few years ago. Oh, and again, can't got lose attention. Mash got a chair on my Go, oh, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Nicely done. So we've got the piercing damage with the bows and the gun lances. We've got, oh, what do I want to focus on? Head. Well, the body's almost out. Let's do that. Oy. So that was a draw. Slashing damage with the kind of sword and shield combo that Kana has and my uh, big sword that I'm using. And then there's also the bashing type, which is the hammer. Yeah. And now, I see its face is red again. Let's yeah. see here. Um, I think it's angry. Both it of them could might use be angry. Some healing. Let's <laughs> you up, buddy. Just maybe. So here uh, as well, I can tell what my teammates are doing. So Kana, uh, the indicator says she's going to use a potion. Mm -hmm. And if I take a look at Avmar here, his health bar, I can tell that's where the potion's going to go. Avmar's going to get the heal, so I'm going to get rid of that poison on Bouldrum. Very nice. And I will offer here as we're going through all these mechanics and layering it up, if you're somebody who's just like hungry for battle mechanics and you love the complexity, you've played Monster Hunter maybe, this is probably all going to seem very familiar to you, but mm -hmm. if you're a player who's maybe newer to the genre and this maybe feels a little intimidating, please don't worry about it. We are a fair way into the demo, but uh, yeah, that's a good they do point. a good job with tutorial as you yeah. first start. So you're going to get those layers, you're going to get taught how to do all these things and how to build on the concept. So yeah. It, it's a fun experience, no matter yeah, no, where your experience level that. I um, so I have two two daughters, and we've, oh, we've no. dabbled a little no. bit in turn-based RPGs. Oh, oh dear, you're losing oh. hearts. Bad news. Oh, no. Get Dude, up, pookie, get pookie. up. Kick but uh, I was just gonna say, like I, for me, a veteran turn-based RPG player, I love the complexity and depth that we get here. But I'm also thinking <gasps> yes. that I'm, you know, planning on showing this game to my daughters. Um, as an entry into the Monster Hunter series, I love that you can make friends with monsties and, and you know, there's not Ooh. as much of an adversarial relationship. So we're going to play this one together for sure. All right, so there we go. Epic. Doubled up. And I really hope this Puke Puke is close to being done. You'll notice the, the health bar actually just has question marks next to it. Right. Uh, some of these big boss type monsters, even if I've run into a monster before, I can't assume that they're all kind of of a comparable level of strength. <laughs> This guy, wow. as JC mentioned, in true Monster Hunter <laughs> okay. fashion, I, I hope this helps. Oh, wow. All right, there we go. Um, I, I don't know how much damage I've done, so I really have to right. rely on those tells as I look at the monster and watch its behavior, kind of keep my fingers crossed and just mm -hmm. do the best I can with my strategy and hope I make it. And that's because you haven't fought this type of Puke Puke before? Is is that it, or? Well, I haven't fought a Puke Puke in this demo yet, but this Ooh, guy's also a, a tough right, a, a guy. Special, right, right, right. He's, okay. he's a bit of a beast, and he, he's looking a little rough looking, for wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's tired now. Cool. That's, that's it. That's your clue. He's close. Okay, come on, he, Kina. It's, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good look. Okay. It's tired. <laughs> We're going to ride. No holding back. Just need to take this guy down. Yes. Oh, come on, buddy. Nice critical. <gasps> You're still up. Oh my gosh. How are you standing? Dude. This guy's a beast. Wow. Hmm. He's doing the puke puke. <laughs> Is that the dance? So first you drool. So you wag your head from side to side. Here, you can tell as well, I used up all my skill points on that ride, so I have to wait for it to recharge, and it looks like he's gonna start doing some poison action again. <gasps> oh, you! Oh, thank goodness. Done. Okay. Oh, that's wow. a good feeling. My partner. Oh, Come on. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw all the right. puns. The puns there's, are pretty There's pretty a lot good. of puns. Yeah. In, there's a lot of puns. <gasps> oh, S rank. Oh, really nice. Let's go, Sam. S rank wow. for Sam. S for Sam. Yes. Well, all right, then. <laughs> so we've dealt with the Puke Puke. I'm ready to go home after this, but yeah. I, I want to take one little look at this nest before I make my retreat because. Because you're basically lucky. here on, on a mission. Yeah. On a class, right? Maybe I can get an egg out of this. Oh, perfect. So we've got some eggs in the nest, and this is really how I'm collecting new members of my party. Uh, by Navaru's estimation, the best eggs are stinky and heavy. <laughs> but I like the look of this one, and uh, it also looks like critters ran off with the rest while the nest was unguarded, so I'm just okay. going to consider myself lucky and get my butt out of here before something else shows up. And my hands are full, so I can't really do much else. Yeah. 
I'm ready to leave. That's so nice. Selecting leave the monster den. <laughs> don't worry, you know, you know where I was going with that, Monster Hunter fans. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to carry it all the way back. <laughs> and instead of riding all the way back, I'm actually going to use a quick travel tool here to get myself back to the village. Uh, if you're familiar with felines from the Monster Hunter series, you know, in addition to being adorable, they offer a lot of fantastic services, <laughs> like a oh. transport service, which is not the most comfortable ride, but it gets you where you need to be. It's Hopefully practical. your egg is okay. Yeah. I hope it's, so, man. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Up here in the upper right, I can see that my next task is to check in with my chief. So I'm going to report in, let him know what we've been seeing here before we move on. And I'm going to kind of bomb through the dialogue here mm -hmm. just because I want to make sure we get to all the content we've got. But the story in this game is really fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's really worth getting into and soaking it in. Yeah. Because you were saying, I mean, these are not monster hunters. They are monster riders, which was like a distinction that I wasn't fully aware of before we started looking into this game. So, I love it because I, I was always the kid who loved stories where you, you were friends with monsters mm -hmm. and, and riding monsters oh, and all yeah. that stuff. So this is really right up my alley. So there we found out that the chief is going to let me enter Guardian Ratha Woods and check out Guardian Ratha's den to see if we can figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. A really key point here is my island has long been protected by this incredibly powerful Rathalos named Guardian Ratha. There's some other interesting story connections that we'll talk about in a minute, but long story short, this Rathalos keeps all the other monsters in line. So if something happened to Guardian Ratha, that might explain why all these weird occurrences are taking mm -hmm. place. Normally, we leave Guardian Ratha alone at his place. We wouldn't go traipsing around his camp, but we're going to go check it out. And they're actually, ooh, this is one of the visiting monster hunters. So right about the time everything went sideways, monster hunters were visiting. Mm -hmm. They kind of have some different opinions uh, oh, than we do about okay. what was happening. Um, from our perspective, maybe we need to find Guardian Ratha and work things out to get things back to normal. From their perspective, maybe it's kind of crazy to have a giant scary Rathalos as your guardian, but, yeah. you know, agree to disagree. <laughs> now here, uh, since I downed that Puke Puke, mm -hmm. I want to fix up my gear. The chief suggested that maybe I, I could be heading into some trouble here. To take a quick look at weapons, this is a variety of the weapons that I could be crafting. And to look at the types here, so we've got the sword and shields, the great swords, the hammers, hunting horns, and then the bows and the gun lances at the end here as well. But I've actually been wearing the same armor for a while, so I'm going to see if I can get something new. Look so how many the, armors. Uh, sure. I know. Look at the that looks so nice. awesome, yeah. and the defense is way better, so I'm going to make that. So here you can tell one of the possible components I haven't found yet, but I need to figure out what I want to spend to make up the points. That tail is worth 10 points. I only need four to make okay. this material into armor. Any extra points get lost, so I definitely uh. want to hang on to that tail for something big and special, but I can make enough up with the scales. And uh, this is something that's probably like the the way that your look and weapon, all that, all that cool stuff changes, is probably familiar to Monster Hunter fans. But to me, coming at this from like an RPG fan, you know, oh, sometimes you go. get like a bit of clothing or your nice. weapon look will change. But I love that you get both, you know, and there's so many ways to change up the way you look. And you got to oh. appreciate how that sword, yeah. the color scheme oh, yeah. is just bam. Yeah, Love and also uh, with, uh, you know, depending on the monster that you hunt, they also have different qualities. So the Puke Puke obviously mm -hmm. has a little bit of poison. So if you wear armor, you'll be a little bit of poison resistance. But if you have like a weapon and you craft that out of there, you know, Puke Puke parts, then Deal that weapon will exactly naturally have that. Nice. And every monster has its own strength and weakness. So you also want to go around and basically uh, hunt to your content and, and kind yep. of... Uh, Get those materials uh, to craft as much stuff as possible so you can really play into that strategy of crafting your best loadout. And I will say it's hard when you take down a monster that's maybe harder to find. Mm -hmm. You've got those parts. You have to make a hard decision about what you're going to make. Oh, right. Like, am I going to find another Puke Puke soon, or do I have to hang on <laughs> to those parts and, and make the best I can? And do I want a weapon? Do I want the armor? Yeah, it's a tough call. But it also is like you can kind of decide how you want to play based on that. Like, are you a more attack-based, you know, more aggressive player? Or do you want to shore up all your defenses, you know, and, and you know, make sure you have that taken care of first? So I love that that kind of freedom of, of you know, how you play. And you got to be stylish. Oh, yeah. That's always. <laughs> yeah, I think important. style might be the, I mean, Main I don't. Consideration? But, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that's how you play RPGs, right, Ethan? <laughs> like, you, you, like, this looks the coolest. <laughs> 
It may have the least amount of like actual clothing, but it's probably the strongest thing. <laughs> right? I and mean, that happens so often. Weird inverse game logic. <laughs> Here we go. So we are at Guardian Ratha Woods. Uh, this is where Ratha's den is. So we're going to do some exploring here and see if we can figure out what's going on with Guardian Ratha. So one of the things that I love about this game is you can enjoy it completely independently. Mm -hmm. So if you've never played a Monster Hunter game, if you didn't play the Monster Hunter Stories game on 3DS, it's okay. You can jump in and really enjoy the story as is. But if you've got those connections to the Monster Hunter franchise, uh, especially here in this case, if you've played the original Monster Hunter stories on 3DS, you'll pick up some interesting connections. So my character here is actually the grandchild of the protagonist from the Nintendo 3DS game. So my grandfather had some incredible adventures, ended up settling down here, and the adorable little Rathalos that he hatched at the beginning of that game grew up to be Guardian Ratha. So ended up being an incredibly powerful monster. Uh, my grandfather has since passed away, but a lot of folks in the world still remember him. He was a very highly regarded monster rider. And there are other folks in the world who still remember him. So you're gonna be seeing some maybe familiar characters and really building on the legacy of that character if you enjoyed that game. Mm. And again, not how I would normally play, but I got places to be, so I miss <laughs> all the collectibles. I know, all these little side, all side the paths monsters. and stuff we have to skip. We're going to try to avoid fights as much as possible. Do, do, do. The size We're of these areas kind of is like here. really surprising. And this is just, remember, like you're, well, this is what only the first or second area that like we have, and this is all in the demo. And again, I will say, pick up the demo. Yeah. The demo is so big. No, I mean on the on the start screen, I you'd played more than 10 hours so far into this. So, that's It's very relaxing too. I love just honestly riding around and enjoying the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful and there's just so much to dig into here. Let's see. That's a little bit of a dead end. Let's try up this way. So, uh for you guys, I'd love to come back to the conversation about your your kind of levels of familiarity with the franchise and what that does. Yeah. Like, JC, I know you have gone deep into Monster Hunter Rise. I don't know what your hour count is right now, but <laughs> you're coming at this as somebody who spent a lot of time hunting monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting because, like, uh, you know, I was introduced to the Monster, Monster Hunter franchise by a friend here, actually, at Nintendo. Um, and we just started hunting together. She's like, try this, you'll, you'll <laughs> like it. No, and no. so, you know, we started playing in... One thing led to another. Next thing you know, I was just hooked uh, because I love helping other people. And all you do is just help other people. And, and it's so wholesome and it's fun. Um, but yeah, um, over time, you start to learn all these little details about the monsters. and You get to know their names and um, all of that. So it's really refreshing to see so many little call outs, the A buttons, mm, the sound yeah, effects. Kind of yeah. Everything kind of lines up in this <coughs> Monster Hunter universe that makes this a perfect complement. <laughs> To, no, no, uh, no, no. you know, uh, <laughs> monster Sorry. hunter players. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. I love <laughs> Sam in the background. Hey, do what you got to do. Uh, you're, you're doing uh, great. Um, but yeah, so again, a really, really interesting. And uh, and I'll admit, I, I am, I'm really, really interested in playing the full game because I think playing the demo absolutely sold me on what yeah what this game offers. And I definitely could use a good RPG right about now. Yeah, and I, from my perspective, like I love RPGs, grew up on RPGs, and have always been a little bit like, do I have here. the time to dive into Monster Hunter? Like I hear people talk about it, and their passion is immediately like you can totally tell how much they love it. Um, but it's always seemed a little intimidating. Uh, but I actually have to stop and check out this. What is? Where are we now? We are in a little feline burrow. Sorry, I saw the no, icon no, on the I... map, and I couldn't resist. <laughs> so Cute. this is a caravaner. He's one of the little felines who runs the quick travel service that I used earlier. So he's got to stop here. I'm not going to travel, but good to know that he's here. <laughs> he's uh, I've also horrible. got um, face on a little healer here. <laughs> she, the supportive feline, if I needed healing, she would help me out, and she is... <laughs> Also, just, Come I on. mean, look at how cute. Uh. Uh, I'm peeled up right now, but I just want to say hi. Um, wow. There's also a chest here. I am not going to steal from these adorable little cuties. Uh, I will leave it up to everybody's own moral but you, compass. you could, though. What, you could. <laughs> okay. But would, would you want to? Look how yeah. cute they are. No, I'll just, I'm just going to finish what I was saying before, which was... <laughs> Got to break, take a break for the feline. But, yeah. um, was just that, like, I have always been like... I know that Monster Hunter gameplay is very real-time, and 
very action based in in the you know the main series um and what i love about this is as an rpg fan i have the time to pick my strategies and you know take you know uh you know kind of things one step at a time in a turn based environment um while i'm still getting all that full monster hunter flavor you know that that is present in the rest of the series um so yeah again like ah! this may be the one that oh, boogie, boogie. Dive nope. in on on other titles too like i'm there we go thinking about checking about rise uh just because of the time i've spent with this demo so mm-hmm. and a lot of the knowledge again everything you've seen here uh it'll definitely help you even mm-hmm. i guarantee it we should hunt together sometime i would love that love that and this game actually has co-op as well so you guys can <gasps> party up in rise and party up here oh nice these are sacred grounds so i won't say too much during this cutscene. But one thing I will mention, if you're interested in the look and you're interested in the game, so check out the trailers that have been released so far. Uh, we had some content in the Nintendo Direct that just showed as mm-hmm. well. So you can get a look at some of the later game content. It's really beautiful. I'm sure he's waiting for Red to come home. That's what Chief Gara always said. But this Red guy's not around anymore, right? So why? The truth is... Once a monster forms a bond with a rider, it never forgets them. Remember that strange light when Guardian Ratha left? Something must have happened then. Otherwise, Guardian Ratha would never have abandoned the island. Okay, let's take a look around. Yeah, leave it to me! My nose knows there's something here! <laughs> And if you've watched any of the trailer content, we're going to see a character here that is probably going to look familiar. Is it? Red! Oh, hi. I can't believe my eyes. Who are you? to say, but this isn't red. Oh, of course. There's no way it could be. It's just, those eyes look like reds. Red was one of our leaders. This is his grandkid. Huh? Red passed away a long time ago. I know. It's just I... I actually came to see Guardian Ratha. Red gave me something to bring back here. Something from Red? Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, What was that? Whoa! Something's coming! Over there! Suddenly regretting missing all those fights I could have earned some experience in. <laughs> and Guardian Wrath is dead? Well, why is it acting so weird? What's going on? This looks properly bad, buddy! Please, take this. It's Red's old kinship stone. Mm. You might be able to use it to calm that monster down. Red's kinship stone? How come you have it? Red, he wanted you to have it. Take it. You ready for this? Yeah, let's do it. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is the next fight in the demo. Um, I, I thankfully will not need to embarrass myself here, I don't think, because we are close to running out of time. Uh-huh. So um, I can just kind of pop through a, a round or two here. But uh, JC, since we're almost done, we could probably circle back to the news that we've got to share about the cross compatibility, eh? Ah, uh, yes. I'm a little bit, I'm sure, a little video will play. Um, and we'll start kind of talking about some amiibo. Um, so, generally speaking, if you have Amiibo uh, from, uh, let's see, from Monster Hunter Rise, and you kind of tap them into this game, I'll kind of 
wait for the uh, and show up. Yeah, something like we that. We got a video. Okay, maybe you should wait for the video. Should I wait? That's all right. I mean, while we're waiting, okay. um, while we're waiting, I'm uh, going to re hit here. Um, so the demo is going to come out on the 25th, so yep. very, very soon. Mm -hmm. The game is going to launch on the 9th, so please do check it out. Um, I've been having a blast. This is a really, really fun demo, and I think you're going to get a kick out of it. Uh, oh, and it looks at like the video is up. Let's go. Yeah, so if you basically, if you have some of the uh, some of the amiibo from uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and you tap them in a Monster Hunter Stories <laughs> 2, have them. Uh, you get some stickers. Uh, and those stickers will look real familiar to you, and they'll let me have them here. Uh, and the inverse is true. So if you tap in the Monster uh. Hunter Stories 2 amiibo into um, uh, into you know Monster Hunter Rise, you get stickers in that game. So yeah, it's uh, definitely something to look forward to because I know I definitely will. Uh, uh, do the same, um, as well as another little point I want to make, which is if you have saved data um, for this particular demo on your system and you fire up uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and it doesn't matter which order it comes in, um, and you talk to Senri the mailman um, in Monster Hunter Rise, um, he'll give you a talisman. And that talisman, kinship that talisman. kinship talisman, yeah. thank you very much. Um, it basically, uh, you get, it also has uh, two skills. Um, the first one's like uh, Master Mounter, which kind of helps you like do your dodge counters a bit easier, helps fill that gauge a bit faster for your writing gauge. Um, and also Wide Range, which I use a lot, which is basically, you know, you have a lot of items, you use some helpful stuff, and then it shares that effect with the rest of your teammates. So really cool, and it's, again, it's free. Um, mm -hmm. I think Sam already hit on the date, but just to remind you again, free demo, lots of lots of good stuff happening on June 25th, full game releases on July 9th, so we're just around Yeah, that's coming up. Good summertime Really, really game. soon. <laughs> and, and with that being said, again, that is all we have to show for you today on Just From Us, so thank you so much. First of all, to Capcom for allowing us to show this really awesome demo. Thank you to Sam and to Ethan. Uh, it's great being with you guys once again. Seriously, it's so, it's so, nice so to much. See you in person, no. yeah. dude. It's so great. Ah. And uh, and also to you out there watching, thank you for sticking around. You could have been anywhere in the world, <laughs> but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. But don't go anywhere because we have more stuff coming up next. We have a bit of a look to show you for some Mario Golf Super Rush. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>